Hi guys, we talked about um, in our first part of our unit, we talked about our um, validity and counterexamples. We now need to get into the bulk of what's going on with this unit with our sentences. So we're going to talk about conditionals, converse, and biconditionals. Okay? Conditional statement is, um, and before we start, what I'm going to suggest is that you pause and you go find yourself two different color highlighters. It's really, really, really going to help you see some differences here between our different kinds of uh, sentences. So I strongly encourage go get a, two different color highlighters or two different colored color pencils that you can underline, please. So the first things first, we talk about our conditional statement. This is going to be a logical statement that has two parts, okay? It's going to have a hypothesis that we use this italicized P for and a conclusion, which is going to be this Q. We're going to write this in an if-then format, okay? We'll see this in a little bit. The hypothesis, this P, this is the phrase following but not including the word if. So when we get here, you'll see we're not going to be including the word if when I say what is the hypothesis. It's going to be the words after it before the comma. Our Q, the conclusion, is going to be the phrase following but not including the word then. So let's first take a look at um, stating the hypothesis and conclusion of a conditional statement. So our conditional statement is going to be if then. So here we see, and we've already seen these in some of our notes. We have if you have no more than two absences and a B average, comma, very important, remember that comma, then you can exempt your final. There's going to be a lot of writing, so you're going to want to pause and make sure you get caught up on the writing because I write very quickly. So I'm going to use one of my highlighters, I'm going to use yellow, to highlight my hypothesis. The hypothesis, remember, is the phrase following but not including the word if. So your hypothesis starts after the if and it goes to the comma. So this is the entire hypothesis right here. I'm sorry, it's a long one. Okay? We see this as P, and we're going to label that P. So down here with hypothesis, you're going to go ahead and write that. We'll just have some silence while we write. You have, we're just copying this word for word. Remember, do not put that word if in there. Okay? We're just putting you have no more than two absences and a B average. Go ahead and pause it and write that in. Okay? I paused my recording. That way the video is not excruciatingly long. So this is what we should have. We start after the if and end before that comma right here, right? The second highlighter I'm going to highlight my conclusion in. We saw our conclusion is the phrase following but not including the then word. So it's after then but before, well this one's missing a period, but before until that period. So you can exempt your final. So here is Q and that's how I write my Qs. So go ahead and pause, and you're going to write under conclusion. You can exempt your oh, the finals down here. Whoop. Didn't see that one. You're going to write in. You can exempt your final. Go ahead and pause it and write that now, please. As you notice, no word then, not highlighted, not included, and no punctuation there. Okay, just those two parts. All right. So let's take a look at the next one. If a train leaves the station on time then it will arrive on time. So let's take a look at our hypothesis. After if, so we're looking at a train leaves the station on time, this will be our P hypothesis. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and highlight both now. Well, now we'll just go ahead and do this. Go ahead and write what we just highlighted under your hypothesis section. Go ahead and pause it and write that down. And this is what we should have. Our conclusion is going to go after then is the word it, so it's going to start at it. It will arrive on time. So go ahead, pause, and we'll write that under the conclusion. Okay, so we do have a couple more examples. If you've got the hang of this, actually example four is going to be a little bit different, so I'd hold off on four. If you've got the hang of it, go ahead and pause it. Fill in for example three, your hypothesis and your conclusion, and go ahead and pause it and then resume and see if you did, did it correctly. So we have, if an angle measures more than 90 degrees, then the angle is obtuse. So again, our hypothesis, one color, 
an angle measures more than 90 degrees. That is it. Okay. And I'm just going to do both at the same time right here. Then our conclusion, not including the word then, it's just going to be four words. The angle is obtuse. Okay, just the angle is obtuse. So go ahead. If you did not do it already, pause and fill those into the hypothesis and conclusion. So we should be seeing and kind of getting the hang of what's going on here. Okay, just those two little parts that we're going to focus on for the hypothesis and conclusion. Now when we get to the next page, example number four, we are going to have to rewrite example number four and five. We're going to be given the sentence, we have to make it into a conditional if-then statement. Now, when we're doing this, it's not going to be as easy as just like this one says, all 30 degree angles are acute angles. It's not going to be as easy as saying, if all 30 degree angles then are acute angles. You're going to have to rearrange some words. You're going to have to um, add in some words, possibly take some words away. So the way we can look at this is we say, if... And say all 30 degree angles, we can just say if an angle measures 30 degrees, okay? Um, or if an angle is 30 degrees, because that will cover all. So you see how we, I, I had to change these words so the sentence makes sense. So here, I'll go ahead and write it out and say it again. If an angle is 30 degrees, comma, please do not forget that comma. Pause it if you need to because I'm about to start highlighting. So here an angle is 30 degrees. I kind of jumped the gun on this one. I should have just waited. This is going to be our conclusion, or sorry, our hypothesis P. Say if an angle is 30 degrees, we could say then it is an acute angle. See how that kind of works changing those words up. Then you have to have if and you have to have then. So then we could put, we can shorten this up. Then it is acute. You could say then the angle is an acute angle, then it is an acute angle, or we just say then it is acute. So different ways that we can write these conditional statements. So here we have it is acute as our conclusion, our Q. So now we're going to write those under hypothesis and conclusion. So go ahead and pause and write, copy those down, what we have underlined. Okay, I'm going to pause, write them, and then a second's going to pop up with the correct answer. All we're doing is copying the words down. So here we see all I did was copy what was highlighted when I underlined the highlighter. Let's take a look at the next one. A cat is an animal with four paws. So let's think about how we can say, say about if a cat is an animal, then with four paws. That doesn't make sense. Okay? So we need to kind of look at how we can say this. Let's say, all right, for example, if this animal is a cat. Look how I still use those same words, but I just rearranged them. So we could state here, if an animal is a cat, comma, pause and make sure we have that written. We're not going to use that word with. Instead, make the sentence make sense. If an animal is a cat, what can we say about four paws? Well, then it has four paws. So we can write that in. If an animal is a cat, then it has four paws. Make sure you pause and get that written, please. Because I'm going to keep going. So now we're going to take our two color highlighters and underline our hypothesis and our conclusion and then write them in. Remember, do not include the word if for a hypothesis. So it's simply an animal is a cat. Your hypothesis and conclusion are not sentences. Okay, we're pulling from the sentence. So an animal is a cat. That's what we're pulling for our hypothesis. P, my second highlighter. Do not include then. Your conclusion is simply it has four paws. That is it. 
So take a moment, pause, and copy that down in what we've, what we've underlined and highlighted. Copy it as your hypothesis and your conclusion, please. Okay, again, seeing that no if, no then, no punctuation. We're just pulling these little chunks out from our sentence, okay? This is probably one of the hardest things for students to do because they have to figure out how to make that sentence make sense and split the two things. Here we have a cat as an animal and four paws. You need to see the two separate parts. That way you can reword it with an if and a then. The other one, all 30 degree angles are acute angles. We're looking at 30 degree angles and we're looking at acute angles. Two separate chunks. Figure out how we can get those, that 30 degree angle is going to be in our hypothesis and the acute is going to be in our conclusion. So our two separate parts, figure out how to reword it. All right, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at our, what we call our converse, okay? We are still, we definitely want our two different colors right now, okay, for P and Q. Your, con your converse, what you're going to do to write a converse of a conditional statement, these if-then statements, all you're going to do is switch the hypothesis and the conclusion, okay? So when we take a look at... Um, a conditional statement, we have if P, then then, then Q, okay? Here, we have taken it and we've switched it around. In fact, we can go back to our first page real quick, so if you're not doing this earlier. But with our conditional statement, we say P, arrow, Q. That means if P, then Q. If the hypothesis, then the conclusion. Here, we're switching. It's all we're doing is just switching these two things around, the hypothesis and the conclusion. So this is, again, where the colors can start really nicely coming to play. Now we're going to say we're still going to have if at the beginning, but now we're just taking these two parts right here and we're switching them. So these two bottom ones would just switch places. The if and the then stay there. We just switch these two. So let's take a look at the first one. The conditional statement, if two lines intersect to form a right angle, then they are perpendicular lines. First things first, we are going to take our colors and we're going to highlight same color we've been using for hypothesis. Let's, uh, let's highlight our hypothesis. Remember, no if. Just two lines intersect to form a right angle. That is P. Our conclusion, let's grab our other color. Not including the word then. That's why we're not including if and then because those words stay there. It's just going to be they are perpendicular lines. There is our Q. So to rewrite this, we are going to start with the word if, always. But now we're going to use Q first. See how this says Q first, then P? So we're going to start off with perpendicular lines. Again, sometimes you have to pull some words from your hypothesis. You have to rearrange to make sure it makes sense. Because you say if they are perpendicular lines, I mean, it, it might make some sense. But we can start off here saying if two lines are perpendicular lines. So we have that perpendicular lines, that big chunk of that, of that conclusion. So we have this as our conclusion now, Q is coming first. We would say comma, then they are, they intersect to form a 90 degree angle. Okay, so then they intersect to form a right angle. Please make sure you pause before I continue if you need to continue writing that. So here they intersect to form a right angle. That was intersect to form a right angle. That was part of our um, hypothesis. So this is P. So we had just switched them around again. Sometimes you do have to reword it a little bit so it makes sense because if they are perpendicular lines, then two lines intersect to form a right angle. Kind of makes sense, but some of these really start sounding weird. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Conditional statement is if an animal is a mammal, then it breathes through lungs. Our hypothesis, an animal is, uh, sorry, animal is a mammal, P. Our conclusion, it breathes through lungs. 
Q. Now, if we want to make this more like swi completely switching these, we can do this. We can say, if it breathes through lungs, that makes sense, okay? If it, bre if it breathes through lungs, Okay, if it breathes through lungs, please pause if you need to finish. We're going to notice it breathes through lungs was Q. We're just switching the two around. Okay. Then an animal is a mammal. So it does make sense sometimes when you just, just straight up switch them. So we can say then, do not forget that word then, or you do not have a condition, or you do not have, you're missing your if then statements. Okay. So here we can say then an animal is a mammal. Period. Pause and get finished writing that so we can highlight. So here an animal is a mammal. There's our P hypothesis part of it. Okay? So all we did was take what my colors are, yellow and pink. I wish we could all use the same colors, but can't. I just took the yellow and the pink and just switched them. Okay? Let's take a look at two more examples before we look at our last thing, the biconditional. All right, so next, we have if two angles are complementary, then their measures add up to 90 degrees. Hypothesis, two angles are complementary. There's P, hypothesis. Our conclusion, their measures add up to 90 degrees. There's Q. Again, this one, if we say if their measures, it, it could still make sense. Let's just go ahead and write it that way. If their measures add up to exactly 90 degrees, okay, because we're going to start with Q first. If, and go ahead and write it out, their measures add up to exactly 90 degrees. comma, okay, pause and finish writing it, please. We see here we matched with our conclusion, Q. So Q came first. We say then two angles are complementary. I know I didn't pause it while well, complementary. Period. Pause and finish writing it, please. So we see all we are highlighting as our now, the ending part, is that two angles are complementary. We have switched P and Q around. So instead of P, then Q, now we have if Q, then P. That's converse, switch. These, you're going to have to make sure you're studying these, okay? The last one, if you study hard for your test, then you will pass. Hypothesis, after if, you study hard for your test, there is P. Conclusion is after then, just three words, you will pass, Q. So let's switch these around. We're going to start off with if, so we can say if you pass, you can even say if you pass your next test, but I wouldn't say if you will pass. That, that, that's not going to sound right. Okay. If you pass, comma, so we started off with Q. Again, a lot of these can be subjective how you write the sentences, making sure you have the pass part first. Now, it was last, now we need it first. Studying hard for your test was the first. We need to switch it to the last now, after the then. So we'll say, then you studied hard for your next, or you studied hard for your test. I apologize about the sloppy handwriting. I'm just trying to write fast. Again, I didn't say for your next test because technically we've already put this in the past, okay? But it's still the same concept. P and Q, P had studying hard for a test, Q was passing. 
we're switching them so now I have passing first and studying hard second. It's okay to have it reworded. Notice again, I am not highlighting the ifs nor the thens. Okay, so here's our P. Please make sure that we're caught up with all of that. The last thing we're going to talk about today in these notes is the biconditional. The biconditional, if I give you all these different kinds of sentences, it is the easiest one to find. We no longer have an if then statement. Okay, no more if then. All right, we get rid of the if. We get rid of the then, what ends up happening is we have a statement where the conditional and the converse are both true. We don't need to focus on that right now. But it contains the statement, or this phrase, if and only if. So you identify your hypothesis and your conclusion. And what you do is you take the if and then away, and between your hypothesis and conclusion, you put if and only if. Meaning, here, if you are a guitar player, then you are a musician. So let's look, our hypothesis, you are a guitar player. No if, okay, just you are a guitar player. Your conclusion, second color, you are a musician. So what we're going to do is we are going to just write down the hypothesis. If you are a guitar player, I want you to pause it because I'm going to pause my recording to make the video shorter and you're going to write you are a guitar player. So this is all we have right now, the hypothesis. Before we write the conclusion, we are going to enter this if and only if. So here we will write if and only if. All right, so we want to make sure that we see this. The if and only if. That makes it the biconditional. Now we fill in just the conclusion. You are a musician. So add, after the if and only if, write in you are a musician. Go ahead and pause it now, please. So the biconditional, you are a guitar player, if and only if you are a musician. I encourage you to try the second one on your own. I'm going to go very, very quick. There's going to be a lot of pausing. The answers are just going to start showing up. First things first, hypothesis. We have if you play football, then you are an athlete. Your hypothesis is simply you play football. Your conclusion is going to be you are an athlete. There's your if and then, your P and your Q. We are going to write down the hypothesis. You play football. Then we're going to write the words if and only if. Then we're going to write the conclusion part, you are an athlete. So start with you play football. I went ahead and jumped ahead and wrote all of it down. Okay, so we have the hypothesis, you play football. We enter the if and only if right here, creating the biconditional. And then we write just the conclusion part. Okay, that's your biconditional. Remove if and then, apply if and only if in between the hypothesis and the conclusion. No need to uh, reword the sentence or the hypothesis or conclusion. Hopefully this made sense. I had to go fast so we, this video wasn't too long. Please ask your teacher if you have any questions and please stay for tutorials if you need help with this.